big fat quiz of everything. You might think we can't possibly cover everything in a 90-minute quiz. And you'd be right, but the big fat quiz of some stuff is a tough sell. <laughs> you can play along at home. All you need is a pen, paper and a heartfelt desire to start a fight with whoever you're watching with. <laughs> right, let's meet our teams. They're the dream team, if the team you're dreaming of features a giant panda and a pedantic Victorian schoolboy. It's Claudia Winkleman and David Mitchell. <laughs> She's a multi-award winning comedian, writer and actress and we've teamed her with a woman who can make the phrase her Viennese whirls are taking a battering sound filthier than a gangbang in a lay-by. It's Mel Gebroich <laughs> and Kristen Schaal. Oh, and finally, Bob's your uncle and Jonathan is your creepy uncle. It's Bob Mortimer and Jonathan Ross. So, it's the big fat quiz of everything. Uh, David, Claudia, you must be fairly confident. I, I'm not confident. I always turn up confident and then I always fail. <laughs> so, you're going to be in charge today? No. Oh. <laughs> no? I won't have that, Claudia. You can also be in charge. Fine. Good. <laughs> Mel seems to be in charge of both of you, it would appear. <laughs> Obviously, uh, Claudia and David, we know who you are, but do you have a team name? Oh, yes, David and Claudia. Should we think of something more complicated? <laughs> I think David and Claudia is excellent. <laughs> David and Claudia. So your team name's going to be David and Claudia. Do you want us to sing it? Yes. <laughs> do... God, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Kristen, uh, have you done a pub quiz before? This is basically a big, fancy pub quiz. Yeah, I did one at an actual pub once, and it was difficult. <laughs> How did you do? Did you...? Oh, I lost. You lost. Yeah. <laughs> I lost, but I was excited to be there, just like I am now. We've also developed a team wave, which goes like this. Elbow oh. first. Elbow, then hand. Ow. Elbow first. Ow. Elbow, oh. elbow, then hand. Do you think you've just invented the high five? <laughs> explained to Mel that if you want to get a high five right every time you focus on the elbow you only look at the elbow and you'll nail it but oh, she it's... thought that meant touch the elbow first and now we came up with a secret <laughs> wave. <laughs> elbow and then wave. If you really want to be sure of getting it right if you just look at the other person's hand and then hit it with your hand. Yeah. <laughs> When I'm in a situation where someone's trying to high-five... When I'm... have you ever been high <laughs> People try and high-five me sometimes. It's a disgrace. <laughs> well, you just have to... You want to try the with the elbow? Try with the elbow, Dave. It works. Oh, all right. This elbow isn't... first and then... Oh, you're but doing... Okay. Okay. Just look at my elbow. Okay. Elbow, then hand. <laughs> Shit <laughs> out of me. Okay, uh, any any team name? Um, I suggested clam jam. She and then she said no way. I don't know what that is. Clam jam is a great. And now she wants to be elbow hand. The elbow hand gang. <laughs> you're you're our guest. How about the from overseas? You decide. Can we be the awesome the awesome sisters? The awesome sisters. Yeah, fine. <laughs> That's a terrible name. The awesome. <laughs> <laughs> awesome well, what's clams. What's your team name? <gasps> awesome clams. Awesome clams. The awesome clams. <laughs> Elbow <laughs> then wave. <laughs> 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 uh, Jonathan, Bob, are you confident this evening, Bob? What do, what do you yeah. Think? <laughs> we're, we're, a lot, we're like the oldies here, yeah. like a couple of old dishcloths that are still reliable, though, do you know what I mean? <laughs> still doing a job. Like a couple of old condoms that have still got one last bang in them. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe even one and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. What would your specialist subject be, Bob? Do you know what, Jimmy? I, am, I'm, I really am an expert on white goods. <laughs> Whether it be Beko, Phillips, you know. <laughs> you can see the fear in their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy, hold on, I'm getting. You are going to be asking about steam irons, aren't you? <laughs> at, at some point, yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> you got a team name? They've inspired us a bit. Yeah. So we thought maybe Clam Jam and Fanny Batter. <laughs> 
what you said. You were like a pair of old dishcloths. Yeah. So you could be the dishcloths. It's just oh, a why thought. Oh, only condoms. Don't unscrap them. <laughs> <laughs> one and a half condoms. condoms. One what? and a half condoms it is, then. One and a half condoms. Our first round is all about history. Roman Emperor Caligula held regular orgies, enjoyed watching people have sex with animals, and committed incest with each of his three sisters. Having said that, it was the best ever episode of CBB's Horrible Histories. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it wouldn't be a quiz without questions. Eyes down, everyone. For our first question, uh, I want you to take a look at this famous quote from Queen Elizabeth I. I've removed some crucial words. All I want to know is what are the crucial words I've removed? Can I ask you a, a serious question? Yes, you may ask me a serious question. Do you want question. us to answer that factually, or do you want, you know, a, a funny answer with, <laughs> with rude words like knob in it? <laughs> Don't give away the magic, David. <laughs> do you go with knobs? No. <laughs> uh, a small and frail woman? <laughs> Mel! <laughs> Mel, you yes, can't say it's so loud. Sorry. It's how the quizzing works. Thank you, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> For our next question, it's over to the children of Mitchellbrook Primary School, oh. who put together a historical masterpiece. What are they acting out here? Secret information. I want to know what they're saying. Okay, okay sir. sir. Let's play. Primary school, literally the best. Uh, so, what were they acting out there? Yes. A scene from history. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. All right. yes. okay, Latin homework, everyone. Take a look at this 2,000 year old mosaic uncovered at the ruins of Pompeii. What does it say in English? Uh, okay. I'm not going to tell you, Mel. There's no. <laughs> Mel. 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 I was just saying. Are you asking them for the answers? I've I no, just. Ba, 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 ba. She was just curious if they knew. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, we have nailed that. Take that awesome clown. Oh, I remember it now. <laughs> okay, for our last question, it's over to second man to walk on the moon. No big deal. Buzz Aldrin. Wow. All right. Thank you. Hello, Jimmy. Growing up, I was inspired by tales of exploration by people who really pushed the boundaries all in the name of discovery. One such mission was Captain Scott's race to the South Pole. On that mission, freezing cold and almost out of food, Captain Oates made the ultimate sacrifice. But what were his famous last words? Okay, so Buzz wants to know what was yes. what were Oates' last words. I wanted to call one of our offspring Buzz because of him. So that's a great name. Is it a nickname? Yeah, it's a nickname. Is it David? Did you have a did you have a cool nickname at school? <laughs> no. I got, um... Oh, people used to say I was... I looked like a rat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was, um... <laughs> oh, that was pretty cool. Okay. What was your nickname, Jimmy? Peanut. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> OK, as everyone, we've all got our answers. Yes. Yeah. So I asked you to fill in the blanks <laughs> of Queen Elizabeth's famous speech. Uh, what were the missing words? David. <clears throat> I know I have the knob of a knob and knob woman. <laughs> not quite working. Uh, but I have the knob and knob of a king. <laughs> I'd like to stress that I don't think that's the answer. Uh, Mel? Kristen? I know I have... I know I have the body of a Uncanny. Weak Uncanny. And ginger woman. <laughs> but I have the heart and inbreeding of a king. <laughs> Jonathan, Bob. I know I have the hands of a small and lazy woman, <laughs> but I have 
the feet and penis of a king. <laughs> That is what she said. It may have been misreported, but that's what she said. <laughs> Cla Claudia, your, your less funny but more accurate answer. I know I have the body of a weak and, weak, a weak and feeble woman, <laughs> but I have the heart and stomach of a king. Yes, that's right. That's exactly the right answer. Totally right. Wow, really? <laughs> Up next, the children of Mitchell Brook Primary School acted at a historical event. What do you think they were acting out brilliantly? Watergate. Yes. Yeah. Was. The children of Mitchell Primary School were indeed acting out the Watergate, Watergate scandal brilliantly. Can I just ask one thing about Watergate? Kristen, you'll probably know as our um, ambassador from over the pond. A hundred percent. Why did he self-tape that he eventually got him caught? loved the sound of his own voice. <laughs> So, points all round for Watergate. I showed you a picture of a 2,000-year-old Roman mosaic uncovered at Pompeii. What does the Latin translate to? Who knew this? Obviously, oh, it should be beware the massive volcano. <laughs> I think it's beware of the dog. Do you? Yeah, oh, that's what we thought. Well, let's go to Jonathan and Bob here. You saw a picture of a dog and you thought, oh, <laughs> let's do it, sex, etc. <laughs> I assumed it would have been Pompeii, it would be a brothel. <laughs> And then this will be a sign saying, come on, let's do it. Come on in. Let's have it off. <laughs> let's do it. Sex, etc. is the incorrect answer. And the answer was, beware of the dog. Is it? Brilliant. Oh, oh, elbow hand. Yeah. Last question on this round. Buzz Aldrin asked you what Captain Oates' last words were. What did you book? I'm going outside. I may be some time. Mm. Uh, Mel. Kristen, what did you put? I'm going now. I'm going now. now. I may be gone some time. <laughs> That's what he said. And... Honestly, who can know for sure? <laughs> and what was your answer to this question, Jonathan? What was, what was Oates' last words? But we, we didn't, didn't know his motivation. Why did he leave the tent? And we thought he was hungry, so we put, I need some piri-piri, I might be some time, like a craving for Nando. <laughs> no points for you. OK, the answer was, I'm going outside, I may be some time. You got it exactly right. Points, points, no points. I heard that in those days, I'm going outside, I'm maybe some time, was like a euphemism for I'm going for a shit. <laughs> so that it wasn't the moment of great sacrifice. He was just going out to have a shit and coincidentally froze to death. <laughs> I did a shit once when I was playing tennis. <laughs> but, uh, I couldn't be bothered. <laughs> not, not on the court, not me thing, but it was quite a long way from a toilet, so I went behind a bush and That's did it. Okay. I'm very urgent. And then I was amazed at how uh, unabsorbent leaves are. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, the scores are... Claudia and David have four points, uh, Mel and Kristen have three points, Jonathan and Bob are lucky to have one. one. <laughs> <laughs> Join us after the break when we'll be doing more of this. I know, but we've started now, so what can we do? See you in a bit. Welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz of Everything. The next round is all about science. The inventors of the aeroplane, Orville and Wilbur Wright, never married. Well, they were brothers, so they weren't allowed to. <laughs> right, time for some more questions, all about science. Eyes down. First up, it's over to my favourite dragon, Deborah Meaden. Hi, Jimmy. In the dragon's den, I'm used to seeing some wonderful inventions, and the best ones always have a unique selling point. That's a USP to you and me. <laughs> But what I want to know is which household innovation was marketed as splinter-free for the first time in 1935? Mitch, do you know the answer to this? No, no, no. Winky? I'm going to say Winkles? No. I'm going to no. say Mitch. Mitch, did you just call David Mitchell Mitch? Mitch. Yeah. <laughs> That'll That's be a Mitch. good nickname for you, Mitch. Mitch. Yeah, Mitch. Mitch. It beats rat face. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Take a look at this video from the 1990s. I want to know what's got them so excited. Stoked. What is it? What is the occasion? What, yeah, why are they so excited? They're excited about something. Why are they so excited? We could answer that in other ways. Because they've they have no sense of proportion. <laughs> I would accept that. Okay. 
I've got a special treat for you now. Joey Essex has made a remarkable documentary about one of his scientific heroes. Oh. Who on earth is he going on about? Hi there. I'm Joey Essex, and I'm here today to talk to you about a proper, clever man. <laughs> he was born in Austria. I don't want to give it away, but good day, mate. <laughs> he was obsessed with sex. He loved penises. I mean, no, he didn't love penises. He, I think he made girls jealous of boys' penises. <laughs> he was like the first person to actually tell someone to lie down and, and then people would talk to themselves and be like, I'm so sad. <laughs> he believed in when you said something by mistake, it was actually what you meant. It reminds me of a time when I used to call my best friend Jake Keith, but maybe his real name was Keith. <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it. A man who invented lying down. He was obsessed with willies. Apparently, he made dreams come true. And he was a little horny geezer. <laughs> Professor Joey Essex there. Who's he talking about? F R E. Yes. <laughs> I mean, where did you learn to whisper in a helicopter? <laughs> That's really good. Thank you very much. I've been in a helicopter, so I got it right away. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Um, have a look at this picture of a woman winning a science-themed beauty pageant in America. Lovely. What Lovely. has she just been crowned? Sorry, Jimmy, did you say what did what was her title? What did she win? Yes. What yes. did she win? When I asked the question, that is the question that I asked. Good. Just checking. Okay, you ready for some answers? Yeah. Oh. All right. Mm. First up, Deborah Meaden asked you what was advertised as being splinter free for the first time in 1935. What did you think it was? David, Claudia? We said lo loo seat. That loo was seats. seats on loos. But sometimes wooden. <laughs> Mel? Kristen? We said broom. Broomstick. That was Kristen's did, idea. Did I, did I, <laughs> Jonathan Bob, what have you we got? We thought toilet paper. Well, it's not made of wood, it's Jonathan. It is pulp. Wood yeah. is turned to paper. Oh, and that's so you think they got it, it previously? They were great. The technology wood. wasn't ready. <laughs> so, Jonathan Bob, you've gone toilet paper. Toilet yes, paper. Splinter thank you. free from 1935. Yes. I can tell you, you're absolutely right. Have a look. Yeah! There are no splinters in northern tissue. Yeah. Well done, guys. So you saw um, some guys in the 90s having a very exciting time. What were they so excited about? Oh, yeah, we know. We thought it might be, because you said it was the 90s, and we recognised Bill Gates, we thought it might be the launch of a Microsoft product like Windows 95. That's exactly the right answer. <laughs> Mel, uh, Kristen, what did you put? Well, they were like, and we got this cool thing called Windows and everyone's going to want to use it, and it's going to be better than everybody else's. And even if you're an Apple user, you're going to have to, like, figure out how to get our windows on. <laughs> uh, Jonathan, Bob, what did you write for this? We didn't know. We looked at the rage. We made a guess. Prostrate results. All clear. <laughs> All clear, Bob. All clear. All clear. My doctor was called Dr Hook. Worst prostrate exam I ever had. <laughs> I've got terrible roids. Have you? <laughs> it's a family affliction. We call ourselves the Gedroids. <laughs> well, I think we've, uh, we've admitted something. You've admitted something. It's time Winking, for your team to share an anal sorry, based I, problem. I, I, this just wasn't what I signed up for. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've got okay, I'm more. just not comfortable. Do you remember the last time we did a Big Fat Quiz? It had sort of nothing to do with embarrassing bodies yeah, at well, all. I, didn't, I don't remember having to describe anything about my anus. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I came and went with the, the secrets of what is there kept to myself. Also, there is something there. Oh. Oh, Mitch, what is it? Mitch, it come on. It would take too long to describe. <laughs> Haunted. <laughs> Haunted. <laughs> yes, this feels like the right forum in which to share <laughs> the affliction of my haunted anus. The haunting of Mitch's ass. Yes. That's <laughs> because many centuries ago, a woman in white <laughs> died there. <laughs> she was killed by a splinter. 
<laughs> it's all come full circle. What a beautiful circle. <laughs> <laughs> So no points there. Yeah. Points, points. OK. <laughs> Next up, Joey Essex made a wonderful documentary about a proper, clever man. Who was he talking about? Sigmund Freud. Did he do that just for you, or does he do that by himself anyway? <laughs> you think it, that might have just been a happy coincidence? <laughs> from a documentary on BBC Four? Or yeah, well... Like it's probably not worth me four. pointing out now, you know the children in Mitchell Brook Primary School? Yeah. We don't just go to their school plays and go, I wonder what's on. <laughs> Did everyone got this? Yes. Freud. Freud. Sigmund Freud. Sigmund, Sigmund Freud. Freud. Points all round. Fabulous. All right, I, sh I showed you a picture of a woman who had won a science-themed beauty pageant. What has she just been crowned? Claudia, David, what did you put? We put Miss Nevada. Because... Uh, we thought that's where they did all of that atomic bomb testing. OK, Mel, Kristen? Miss Nuclear Nevada testing site. Oh, you, you're very close. Uh, Jonathan, Bob? <laughs> we just... We thought it was something to do with testing. We went Miss Atomic and then brackets to give her her full name, Bomb. You got it exactly right. She was crowned Miss Atomic Bomb. <laughs> yeah. Oh! No way! <laughs> you don't get a point, you don't get a point, you get a point. So, at the end of that round, the scores are Claudia and David have six, Mel and Kristen have five, Jonathan and Bob have four. <laughs> Join us after the break when we'll be finding out what else our guests don't know about everything. See you in a bit. Welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz of Everything. The next round is all about music. Elvis is the biggest selling solo artist of all time. In fact, right at the end, he had a massive number two in the pipeline just waiting to be released. <laughs> Elvis's hip gyrations were considered so sexy, TV shows only shot him from the waist up, which is also why this podium's here. <laughs> On to the questions. For our first question, it's over the Channel 4 newsroom where legendary journalist John Snow Yay. is reporting on a classic 70s song. <laughs> but what is it? Over to yes. you, John. Doctors in the USA believe they have found a miracle cure for young men prone to depression. According to medical reports, construction workers, naval and police officers, cowboys, bikers and those of Native American descent are thought to be most at risk. <laughs> but it is suggested that hanging out with like-minded boys at local religious youth clubs could help sufferers pick themselves off the ground Eliminating the need to be unhappy. The simple alternative treatment program includes getting yourself clean, having a good meal, and doing whatever you feel. <laughs> that sounds like fun. Back to you, Jimmy. Thanks, John. He's so... I mean, isn't he? He's so fit. Trust me. OK. You have to meet him in person. I mean, no, he looks good on the screen, but not like, ooh, I want to, like, uh. It's the way... <laughs> Me. No, it's visceral. It's the knowledge that he well, has. If you're a fan of the Silver Fox, where do you stand on uh, Jeremy Corbyn? Well, he's li I'd like to share a sherry with Corbyn. Mm -hmm. But Snow... <laughs> <laughs> Take a look at this clip of three concerned Christians on televangelist show Praise the Lord. What I want to know is why they're so upset. All right, I heard that one. All right, I'll slow this down a little bit. Uh, listen for Here's to My Sweet Satan. Here's to my sweet Satan. <laughs> Y'all hear that? <laughs> She's really yeah, upset. OK, so why are they so upset? Why are they so upset? Yeah. It's a televangelist show called yeah, Praise yeah. the Lord. Yeah. I think we got that right. I do, too. I do, too. Yeah. I'm feeling really good. Boom. That's okay. a dead cert. Don't want to be too smug about yeah. it, but well done. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> OK. For our next question, have a listen to the beginning of a piece of classical music composed in 1902. The next bit of the song became the most listened to tune in the world. Why? Have a listen. OK, so why did that piece of music become the well, most listened to in the world? Can we have it again and then play the other bit? <laughs> no, no, you cannot, but the next bit of that, the next sort of four bars yeah, that's became what the I'm most listened need. to. In 2009, it was listened to 1.8 billion times what? a day. Oh, I think I know. 
Right, so you all got something for that? We got it, we got it. Okay, Thank excellent you so news. Okay. much, Jimmy. No problem. In 1995, Alanis Morissette released a hit single, oh, Ironic, in which she sings about things she mistakenly believes to be ironic. <laughs> Can you name three of them? Oh. Oh. Come on, Chris. Yes. Nobody speak! <laughs> ironic. That's, That's not no help, is it? I'm so sorry, I don't know the works of Alanis Morissette. Yeah, shh. Primo, was your help there just going, dude, ironic? Yes. Yeah. I'm definitely trying to give those right. She's like, ironic, ironic, ironic. <laughs> With your ones that you're putting down, yeah. are they quite long? No. I'm not putting her when she goes, don't you think? I'm not in that <laughs> business. I think Kristen is doing that business. Okay, she's... Well, you no, you read watch what her, I'm Because doing. she'll have to attach a separate sheet. <laughs> Like an insurance claim, explain for <laughs> Claudia, are you spitting drink out? If I laugh and I'm drinking hot drink, if nose. I laugh, it's going to come out of my nose. So if yeah. instead I just expel from the mouth, it's fine. Right. <laughs> my dad once did that with rice. Yeah, he was tea. He was um, eating, eating rice. some. <laughs> eating some rice, and then he laughed. <laughs> Kristen, it looks like you've been sat together on a plane and Kristen is not happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> Time for some answers. You saw Jon Snow reporting on a massive 70s hit. Which hit was he talking about? YMCA, YMCA, YMCA. Yeah, well, let's YMCA. see if you're all right. YMCA. Over to you, John. OK, you all got points there. I was imagining him in the nude. <laughs> That's great, no. slightly. Is she oversharing there, Kristen? No, I'm, I'm supporting it. But I knew we were going to be friends. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I showed you a clip of the 80s TV show Praise the Lord. What were they worried about on this evangelical show? Yes. OK, Mel? Uh, it, it's a thing known as backmasking which is when, uh, if you play a record backwards, apparently you hear some kind of satanic message. Yeah. Uh, we believe this was from the Led Zepp song, uh, Stairway to Heaven. That is a very accurate and correct answer. Yeah. Bring out the uh, lead. <laughs> yeah. David Mitchell, Claudia Winkleman. Hidden satanic messages in music when it's played backwards and then Stairway to Heaven. Well, 100% uh, correct. Uh, Jonathan, Bob. Led Zeppelin backwards equals devil worship bracket stairway. Well, everyone got this right, yeah. Uh, next up, I made you listen to a bit of classical guitar music composed in 1902. Why did the next part of the song become the most listened to piece of music in the world? Uh, Mel, Kristen? Mel decided... Oh, this, I thought me. this, well, I thought this was a great answer. The start-up notes of a computer. It's good, but it's not right. Uh, Jonathan, you knew this. We know this, and I even know, for an extra point, can I tell you the name of the uh, piece oh of music God. it's taken Oh, yeah, you can, yeah, great. OK, the original title is Anokia Ringa Tona, and it's an Italian... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's the Nokia Ringtone. It's Grand Vals by Spanish composer uh, Francisco Tarraga, and it goes like this. I'll play you the whole thing. Give you a point for ringtone? Yes. What? Right. What? what? Are, are you insane, yeah. you white faced fool? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Peanut! Ringtone is not enough of an answer. Well, you've got Nokia ringtone, it's not yes. a lot more. I mean, well, it was only used more. on the Nokia phone. I think it's a totally acceptable answer that it was a ringtone. Well, I don't see admit. why we have to come up with a brand. If I said to you, uh, in what to Shakespearean it? play does uh, to be or not to be appear, would you just write play and assume that was it? <laughs> OK, final question on music. I asked you to name three things Alanis Morissette believed were ironic in her song. What have you got? It's like rain on your wedding day, a free ride when you already paid. <laughs> it's like in the drawer of... It's like, it's like a drawer of forks 
when all you need is a knife. <laughs> and also, it's like, when you fear of frying and your plane goes down, then it goes, goes isn't that knife? <laughs> That's kind of she goes. I mean, that fair enough. Exactly. And we remembered rain on your wedding day. Free ride when you've already done your thing. Free ride when you've already don't paid. A pocket when you, when you don't need a pocket. Hairbrush <laughs> when you don't need a hairbrush. And window when you're asleep. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they've invented cinema, but you're blind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan Bob, what have you what have you got, guys? We got Wayne's on a wedding day. Yeah. Then we thought in the ironic when they get your name right on your Starbucks cup. Because, <laughs> because we all complain about that and it would be like a sense of irony. And then <laughs> when your boyfriend's made of ham. <laughs> <laughs> That's ironic. Very ironic. I'm now thinking of Jon Snow covered in ham. <laughs> at the end of my bed. Covered in ham. <laughs> That's ironic, cos I was too. <laughs> <laughs> OK, no points for you. Points, points. I won. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think Mel oh. really wins, cos it's the best edition. I like Mel's version, version better. I Mel's is better. Ironic. 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 Only knows the national anthem. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now time for a special bonus round. Oh, I'm yes. going to show you pictures from three famous album covers, which have all been subtly improved. Can you tell me what they are? And I'll give you a bonus point if you can name the album. Okay. So artist and album. Here's the first one. Oh, I do know that. Oh. If you need the album name as the artist as well. Well, you just do. the artist will get you a point. The album name will get you a bonus point. Uh -huh. Second one. <laughs> Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, OK. Yes, okay. Yes. That I yes. properly know. Took me ages to get that dress on. <laughs> I mean, I'm aware I'm not You look adorable, by the way. Okay. And the third one. Good luck, everyone. Oh. <laughs> I mean, that was, that was the easiest one to do. I just undressed. <laughs> OK, have you all got your answers for this? Let's take a look. So, uh, Mel, what, what did you put for the first one? Right. I think it might be Craig David. Yeah. OK, and what was the album called? All over my ball. <laughs> No. no. I love it. Can you say last... it again? What's the Wait, last is it bone? Word? No. Is it bone you're saying? Oh, is all it over bone? my bone. No. <laughs> bone. <laughs> no, it's bone. Craig David all over my bone. <laughs> no. No. I, I sing bomb, like, like. Can you? Are you saying bone or shh? <laughs> imagine, imagine it's a word you can say in your normal voice. <laughs> I say it. I, I what, what, it. What would it be? B O O O O O O O O O N G. David all over my ball. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, Claudia, David, what do you get for the first one? We got magically Craig David, and I can't remember the full title, but it was on oh, Monday. Man. I did something on Tuesday. Did, on you, did you write Monday? I had a sandwich. I know that's not the answer. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just, it's 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 just using that. As an illustration. Okay, how does it go? You know how it goes. Craig David all over my bowl. I've got Craig David all over my bowl. Oh. <laughs> have to... It was That's excellent. Need a wipe. Um, <laughs> I jumped on what did you think that you got Craig David? We, I thought, we thought it was one, two, select the bong. <laughs> I can tell you. Oh, well, let's take a look. It, it was Craig David. Born to do Born it. To Born do to do it. it. Born to do it. Born to do it. The second one. <laughs> Madonna okay. like a virgin. Yes. Madonna of like course. a virgin. Madonna like a virgin. Yeah. And Madonna like a virgin. Everyone got points. <laughs> and and the final one. I oh. didn't know what the title was, but I was. I thought it was Marilyn Manson. Marilyn, <laughs> Marilyn Manson. Manson is the right answer. Jonathan, <laughs> Bob. We thought Marilyn Manson. We think it, the album's called <laughs> either Creepy uh, mm. Smooth Balls or. <laughs> Or creepy uni ball. We weren't sure. <laughs> or creepy smooth uni ball. A smooth oh. uni ball. Hang on, is so it? That's you? what he's got. You're very, very close. It's mechanical animals. Well, we should uh, have that then. All over mad creepy that. smooth ball. <laughs> Well, let's take a look and see what that's done to the scores. I can tell you, Jonathan and Bob have 11, Kristen and Mel have 12, Claudia and David have 14. <laughs> See you after the break for more questions. Hacking five.
Welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz of Everything. Our next round is all about words and language. The Rosetta Stone is believed to be the key to understanding Egyptian hieroglyphics. It's the modern equivalent of trying to explain emojis to your nana. <laughs> the best-selling book of all time is the Bible. Well, just wait till they release it in paperback. <laughs> OK, time for some questions. Take a look at this painting of the Lord, Protector and all-round prick Oliver Cromwell. <laughs> Cromwell was adamant that his portrait be painted as naturally as possible, leading to the popularisation of a phrase. What was the phrase? He's got some carpet burn. <laughs> He's also got a toilet seat round his shoulders, hasn't he? Isn't he? <laughs> For our next question, it's over to someone with even more ridiculous teeth than me. It's Rylan. Hi, Jimmy. Uh, now, interestingly, the best-selling British novel of all time is Charles Dickens' A Tale of Two Cities, with over 200 million copies sold. Now, I think, although it's set in the 18th century, the book's depiction of the subjugation of the French uh, <laughs> proletariat by a wealthy elite still resonates with audiences today, particularly in the current political climate. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, can your teams tell me what the first line of the book is? See you soon. I think we've broken yeah. Ryland. <laughs> You know, Dickens, I think, it's popularly held that Dickens is the only author whose name has become a phrase, cos we say, what the Dickens? Well, here's a boring fact. What the Dickens was an expression coined by Shakespeare hundreds of years before what? Dickens was born. So he could see the future? <laughs> Presumably, yeah. <laughs> Actually, our next question... Uh, here you go. William Shakespeare... <laughs> is credited with inventing many words and phrases that are now commonplace. Can you think of one? <laughs> <laughs> but what did he mean by the terms fading, dying, flashing fire and melting? What was he think, talking about? Think. And that's uh, an early portrait of David Mitchell there. Look at that. <laughs> I, so they all mean the same thing, yes? I'm, com I'm, comfortable, I'm comfortable saying, let's Christian. go with that. OK. okay. Time for a say what you see. All you've got to do no, is say. I love these. What you see. It's a famous proverb. Okay, just say what you see. What's that? Ivy. Okay, just watch for when they get it. Their faces light up. It's joyful. Yes. Oh, there he is. <laughs> it's fun doing that one, Jimmy. Oh, I know. I know. Uh, there, she's got it. <laughs> We're just waiting for... Midge. Nobody speak. This is what we are going to wait till ah, we get this. Yes. <laughs> OK, you ready for some answers? Yes. OK, here's the answers. All right. I asked you what phrase was made popular by Oliver Cromwell, asking them to paint his portrait as naturally as possible. What do you think it was? And you've gone for Mel and we, Kristen? We've got words and all. Words and all. Words and all. And Jonathan, We Bob? also thought words and all. Words and all. And Claudia, David. Well, we thought... Possibly warts and all, or tackle out. <laughs> the well-known phrase... It is a phrase, tackle out. It means so you can see your penis and testicles. <laughs> uh, well, uh, uh, you all, all got that. Warts and all is the phrase. Ryland asked you, what was the first line of A Tale of Two Cities? What did you all put? I'm very worried about this. Go on, what do you think it is? It's a, it's a, it's a far better thing that I do now. OK, I mean, it's the most famous sort of opening line of any I piece know, of literature. It's That's gone. So... I know it, but it's totally gone. I uh, so know this. OK, so can we all look at Mel's face as Jonathan and Bob tell us what you put? It was the best of times. It and was the worst, the worst of, times. of times. I knew that. So why didn't you write it down? I don't know. Because you didn't know it. Because you didn't know it. Yeah. No, I had you a little... Know it. You I had a little um, Irish <laughs> liqueur before the part started, so things have gone a bit fuzzy. <laughs> That would be a nice slogan, wouldn't it, for Baileys? You know, things have got a bit fuzzy. <laughs> Mitch and Winky, did you get that? No, but well, then Mitch once I it. saw him start yeah, writing yeah, it down, I went, of course! <laughs> so, points for Claudia and David, uh, points for Jonathan and Bob, and nothing for you two. <laughs> Mel, are you at all aware that you're not in a park now? <laughs> Lads, this is a long quiz and we need a little sharpener to yeah, just yeah. get ourselves through. A little sharp. <laughs> Come on. I will, I will be more interesting in two minutes. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry, Lads. This is the BBC's worst nightmare, a bottle fight between Strictly and Bake Off. <laughs> <laughs> there can be no winners. OK. So next up, I asked you what William Shakespeare was on about when he wrote about people fading, dying, flashing fire and melting. What did you all think? You've gone with Claudia and David? We wondered if they were expressions for orgasms. OK. Mel? 
Kristen? Orgasming. OK, and we, we are in the Bob? same air, but we've suddenly thought that maybe we've been a bit base in our language exactly. and choices, so we've pulled back and we just said, the big moment. <laughs> it's the big moment when a gentleman or a lady or people, you know, or any, whatever you identify as, when you arrive. <laughs> when you get to the top of the escalator. <laughs> But it's four people sharing one tiny bottle of Baileys. I don't really drink. <laughs> this could have drastic effects on the Winky. Let's do it. Let's do some roly <laughs> <party. laughs> Well, they, do, they say that about alcohol, don't they? <laughs> so, yes, they were all euphemisms for orgasms. You all get points. Yes. Nice okay. Nice. Finally, I showed you a Say What You See of a famous phrase. What, what did you put? A stitch in time saves nine. Yes. Ask tit. I couldn't do it. I kept on going, dice, donkey, bird. What is it, David? And then he went, I've got it. <laughs> Jonathan Bob, did you get it? Yes, yep. we very much enjoyed the whole process. We all it was got a it. lot of fun. <laughs> I sense. Is it time to bring out my energy balls? Yes. <laughs> Homemade this morning. Well, what are in your energy balls? Balls of energy, lads. Come on. Oh, Made. <laughs> made this morning, cos I remembered... Kristen just picked a hair out of them, Yeah, I so. did. I remember... Oh, sorry, love. That's fine. <laughs> Lower or upper hair, was it? It was a brown... <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I remember... You're not allergic to nuts, are you, love? That is pure nuts. <laughs> <laughs> you all right? No, I didn't go. OK. <laughs> there we well, go. a great time to ask as well. Energy balls. <laughs> so energy balls. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for a special oh. guest. Oh, oh yes. Will you please welcome... From First Dates All Round Dreamboat, Fred Siriex. Oh. I mean, he's just an absolute dreamboat, oh, isn't he? Look at him. Oh. oh, with the ladies. Would you like a he's, ball of energy? Uh, uh, <laughs> I just, I mean. Hi, darling. Hi. Hello, Claudia. Yeah. Nice to see you. And you? No, we've never had that. So nice. <laughs> so nice young man. Question for us this evening, I believe. What, what question have you got? Come on, guys, come on, hop, hop. Oh, okay. let's go. Oh, yes. Quickly, oh, let's this, just do the bottle properly here. Suddenly oh, things get interesting. That's I mean, right, one more bottle, that's it. So, you know, I'm from France, you know, and in France we drink a lot of champagne. Really? And uh, this is a normal bottle, mm -hmm. as you can see, this is what you all have in your fridge. It's but um, what I would like you to do is name these bottles of oh, champagne. So, oh, so um, this is two bottles. Four bottles, eight bottles, um, that's 16 and that's 20. And have you in your place, have you ever sold one of those big 20 bottle ones? All the time. What? Really? All, the, All time. the time. So people don't realise how far away the bottle is. I'll <laughs> <laughs> have one of them. <laughs> You're in for 20 bottles. <laughs> So you've all got to write down the different sizes. Two, four, two, four eight, six, 16, 16, 16 and 20. 20. 20. Two, four, eight, okay. 16. Are we allowed to taste the champagne? Like, I'd like to taste the well, biggest one. No! Obviously. Can we give it to them? Yes! yes. The big one! Okay. Jim, okay. let's open one. Let's, let's do that. Let's do no, that one. Big no, big one. No, no, big no, 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 We're giving it to well, them. Well, we could do that one. No, no next one up. Next one up. audience? That one? Second for largest one. You might as well go for the largest one. Let's go one. for the largest one. It's oh, very... Okay. I need some help. Oh, what do you need? Oh. 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 Are you going to help me? Do you want me to hold it between my legs for you, Fred? <laughs> Okay, I'll have another nut ball on your way over. Yeah. Do you want another well, energy, ball, another energy ball? ball? I'll hold it for you between I'm, my legs. Get down, everyone! Don't get point down. it. There we go. Point it out. Are you scared? Are you scared? Are you scared? Give it a pull. Give it a pull. Give it a big pull. I'll pull backwards. And you pull forward. You keep working here, you can and I'll pull back on the, on the shoe. This, no, how do you feel? It's getting a bit hard to hold it up. Pop up. That's okay, I've got it. Hell. OK, uh, are you ready? Okay. Is it going to fall back? Oh. <laughs> oh, you're a terrible tease, Fred. <laughs> I thought this that is was the best thing going to happen. I'm going quick. Oh, oh yeah, Fred. I can't bear the suspense. <laughs> Just relax. It's easy for you to say. It's my first time. You've done this loads. <laughs> oh, my God. Why is he making that noise, Fred? <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. Come on, you can do it. Just oh. 
<laughs> Think of France. Come on. Close your eyes. Work the base, Fred. Work the base. Oh, my God. It's dry. It's too dry. Man, I think, I think he's it's definitely too dry. at the top of the earth. You God. might need to duck. Oh! <laughs> Okay, there you Fine. go, perfect. Go nuts. Love me. That was the most work I've done for years. <laughs> no one thought this is going to take us Lester, forever. Lester, one of them take was for Graham Russell's Now, <laughs> I'm sorry. I can imagine here. Yeah. Oh, really? like oh, oh, sorry, oh. gang. There you go. Oh. I mean, he's going to play. I mean, yeah. Try and get some more. What we might do is we might get our waiters on. Yeah, yeah. they can get the pouring done around there. Waiters. Here, here you go, boys. You grab those. And I need a wipe. You grab those. You grab that over there. Pour out some champagne for everyone. Hey, listen, Jimmy, if you ever need a job in a restaurant, just give me a call. Uh, someone stole a bottle from there as well. OK, so uh, what are the bottles called? Let's get your answers. Claudia, David, what did you put? Right, we went Magnum. Oh, yes. Magnum! Magnum. Correct. Yeah. But Magnum. then we got confused. We, we knew they were all, apart Oops. from Magnum, right. they're all biblical. Uh, so we went for the next one, we went Big Jesus. So you thought that was Big Jesus? <laughs> Not really. It was a guess. Then we went Jeroboam. <laughs> then we went Methuselah. And then we went oh. Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah. <laughs> so what was the last one, Claudia? I can't say it. No, but what was it? Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah, sure, OK. Uh, Mel? Kristen? Right. So we went, we went big to small. Big to um, small, OK, so... Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah. Never could. Yeah. Then I think it's something like Samsonar. Samsonar. Methuselah. Then Jeremy Bowen. <laughs> then. Um, I thought Bethesda. 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 It's a good word. Bethesda. <laughs> it's a good word. We'll use it for something. Um, uh, Jonathan, Bob, did you get these? We got them. We got. We forgot Magnum. That's the one we yeah. didn't get. Yeah. We got okay. Jeroboam, Nabucodonosor, <coughs> the little bargain bottle. <laughs> Party 8 and Kardashian is the big one. <laughs> That's the big one. The Kardashian is yeah, the big one. Okay. Oh, what, uh, uh, Fred, tell us the right answers. So the big yes. one is uh, Nabucodonosor, as uh, Claudia was saying. This is the Balthazar. Balthazar. Ah, Balthazar. <laughs> this is the Matuzela, and yeah. the Jeroboam, and the Magnum. So, oh, Claudia and David, what? you got four. Mel and Kristen got three. And Jonathan and Bob got two. Right. Oh. <laughs> OK, let's have a look and see what that sounds in the scores. So, Jonathan and Bob have 17. Uh, Kristen and Mel have 18, Claudia and David have 22. <laughs> We're going to take a break for ladies and gentlemen. Let's hear one more time for Fred Suix. Thank, Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz of Everything. I'm not going to lie to you, everyone is a little bit drunk now. <laughs> uh, the next round is all about film. Most superhero films are based on comic books. Of course, you're not supposed to call them comic books anymore. The proper name for them is nerd fiction for virgins. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's fine with it. <laughs> right, time for more big fat questions all about films, all right? For our first question, it's over to Warwick Davis. Hi, Jimmy. Now, as you know, I starred as Marvin the Paranoid Android in The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy film. Well, I mean... I... I was in a big robot costume and, uh, well, my voice was dubbed, but, uh, <laughs> anyway. According to The Hitchhiker's Guide, what is the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe and everything? What is the answer to life, the universe and everything? It's quite a big question, really. I'll tell you the answer. <laughs> Champagne and donuts. <laughs> Audience at home, we also had uh, donuts during the break. Full disclosure, we're having an amazing time in TV land. <laughs> OK, take a look at this clip from the award-winning <laughs> Disney film White Wilderness, featuring some cute, fluffy lemmings. Yet over they go, testing themselves bodily out into space. <laughs> oh. 
OK, so that clip of Lemmings caused a huge amount of controversy. All I want to know is why. Oh, what have you...? <laughs> I have... I, I'm of a certain age and I've had problems and I need to take my pills. <laughs> and I just thought this was an appropriate time. Oh, no, it's a great time, yeah. <laughs> take, take some pills, yeah. And I'm not meant to have them with drink. I think... How many? I don't know if this, but I think that's a... Is that a Jeroboam or a Nebuchadnezzar? <laughs> that's a lot of pills, isn't it? Hey, I'm still here, Jimmy. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to watch this. <laughs> is that the prescription you just said, take a handful? No. I know them off by heart. No, I've got two statins, two beta blockers. Yeah, and stress. Take the edge off. Yeah, and <laughs> two what I call my night cuddles. <laughs> <laughs> well, we should probably say goodnight to Bob. The quiz isn't over. But... <laughs> Take a look at this oh, promotional yeah. poster from the former Czechoslovakia. <laughs> it's for a Hollywood Sorry. blockbuster. Just name the film. What film is this poster advertising? <laughs> It's a poster from the former Czechoslovakia. This is their. This was their proper poster for the film. Could be a shower. duchu. What year was it? Uh, the eighties. Yeah. It was an eighties big hit. Huge, yeah. huge Massive. movie. Okay, well, just tell us a bit more. Don't be cagey. Did you just say something? I don't like it when you're cagey. How on earth are we expected to know without clues? Come on! <laughs> If you can work out what that is and what's going on, where are they? He's sucking He's up throwing a, a starfish at a building. <laughs> no! We just named the Hollywood blockbuster where that happened. <gasps> Did you just say what you just said? What, what? You said something about the buildings. Oh, Go on. Well, I, said, I said, where are they? Yeah, that's why I think. And finally, take a look at Brad. I definitely would pit giving a compelling performance in Fight Club. Mm. Like looking in a mirror, this. Take a look. Every week. Tyler gave the rules that he and I decided. Gentlemen, welcome to Fight Club. The first rule of Fight Club is you do not talk about Fight Club. The second rule of Fight Club is you do not talk about Fight Club. Right. OK, so that's, that's Brad there. Uh, those were the first two rules of Fight Club. I'd like you to name another rule of Fight Club. Oh. I know, David, you don't like to talk about it, so just write it down. Give me Jon Snow. <laughs> snow over pit, definitely. Wow. Yeah, I think I'd take snow, over pit. snow right. over pit. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Mitch, snow or pit? Well, se sexually, snow or pit. which would I like to ha most like to have sex with? Snow Is that what you're asking? Just snow or pit. Pit! <laughs> 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 you ready for answers, everyone? Yeah. So Warwick Davis wanted to know, according to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, what's the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe and everything? What was it? 42. <gasps> oh. Because I looked 42. over at Mitch and I saw him clearly do a two. <laughs> so I put two. <laughs> but then I put CO2 because I didn't know what... <laughs> <laughs> I saw him do a two. You saw him do a two. Well clearly done. do a two. I mean, Sorry, CO2. so you, you cheated and it didn't pay off. Yeah, basically. <laughs> OK, well, the answer is, of course, 42. OK, next up, I showed you a clip of the Disney film White Wilderness. Why did it cause controversy? Claudia. Because uh, they were shooed off, pushed off, thrown off by researchers, so that it created a su the suicide myth, if you like. OK. Jonathan, Bob, did you get this? Well, well, I know there was some faking of the footage, <laughs> but they don't do that, naturally, and Disney created the myth that they leaped to their suicide yeah. death. Mel, well, Kristen? Well, I, well, I, I thought maybe they're actually prairie dogs. And people are, they're like, oh, look at these lemmings. And they were prairie dogs that they were posing as lemmings. <laughs> OK, I'm not angry you got it wrong, but Mel looks super angry you got that wrong. I'm absolutely... I mean, she... I'm yeah. dev, mate. I'm totally dev. <laughs> What's dev mean? Devastated. Oh, jeez. <laughs> You're so upset you can't finish yeah. the word. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I can tell you that those lemmings do not jump off cliffs and they were pushed off by the filmmakers. Oh. Wow. That's wow. Awful. They scooped them up afterwards and made jackets. <laughs> <laughs> Cruella, that's who you are. Yeah. <laughs> These are real horses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
So uh, points okay. for Claudia and David, points right. for Jonathan and Bob. Yeah, yeah not so much the prairie dogs. Sorry. Right. We're overtaking. We're going to I showed you a film poster from uh, Czechoslovakia. Uh, what did you think the movie was? Kroti tele duchu. Kroti tele duchu. I thought Wall Street. Ah. Oh. <laughs> OK, jo Jonathan. No, we know, know it now. Thinking. Because the way you said crocodile duchu. Kroti tele duchu. Then it's got to be Crocodile Dundee. Crocodile Dundee. But we didn't get yeah. it. We oh. thought it was Fifty Shades of Mickey Work, cos that's <laughs> kind of what he looks like now. Cla Claudia? All right, just bear with me. Yeah, go on. You oh. said buildings. Yeah. And I thought of the buildings in New York, and then I thought that he was sucking something up, and I thought, 80s blockbuster. What did you put? You say it. Ghostbusters. <laughs> That's the right good. answer. <laughs> Final question in the right. film round. Yes. Uh, first two rules of Fight Club are you do not talk about Fight Club. Oh. I asked you to name another rule of Fight Club. Claudia Winkleman has her hand in the air. If it is the first time you are at Fight Club, you will fight. Correct. Oh, yes. Oh. She's good. And yes. you've also got... I couldn't remember. He said remove clothing. You don't have to ask me twice, Mr Pitt. Um, <laughs> I put no shirts, no shoes, but I think maybe it was no shirts, no belts. That's the airport. That's at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, you definitely get a point for, for those answers. Uh, Mel and Kristen, uh, what, what did you go for? Uh, you do not talk about fight. So the first rule was you, you don't do talk, talk about fight. Club. And the second rule was you don't talk about, you don't fight, talk club. about fight. club. And you thought the third rule might be you, you don't, don't talk, talk about, about fight. Club. Club. <laughs> okay, I, I think he hammers at home in that yes. speech. I remember thinking redundant, redundant, redundant. Yeah. We, Bob. we thought that as well. He said yeah. you do not talk about fight club. You do not talk. And then he says, yeah, no, please, really, don't you know, talk about it. <laughs> and he said, Thank you. And then punches the guy. But those first ones there, that no shirts, no shoes, no weapons, that's not fight club. That's, that's the rules that loose women, cos I've been on that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, OK, so no points, no points. Points. Oh. Oh. Time for a special bonus round. Oh. For our next question, you each have a mask under your desk. Oh. Yes, Take them out do. and put them on. Oh, I love this. I simply oh, want to know which film scary. they appear in. And do we... So we have to guess which one we're wearing? <laughs> no, no, you have to write them all down. <laughs> I've got a massive head. I can't oh, get this off. Seriously. <laughs> I can't open my eyes. Oh. David, you've got to commit to the pig face. I can't um, open Sorry. my eyes. <laughs> you can't sore. open your eyes? Yeah, inside it. Your face is sore. Well, if you just lift up your eyelids, David, that should do it. Jimmy, what are you oh, wearing? <laughs> Oh, sorry. David, you look gorgeous. <laughs> Never mind Brad Pitt or Jon Snow. I'm going for Mitch right now. <laughs> I'm slightly airless in here. It's a bit airless. This is genuinely right, the it? most terrifying scene. I've... Can we take them off now? I can't. I think I'm <laughs> Just David, I think you can probably take it off now to have a little look around. Thank you. Ah. It's a good thing David Cameron wasn't in here. <laughs> All right, so let's have a look and see what you got as answers. Let's go with Mel and Kristen. Um, that, so, Buzz Darn Darko, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Sounds of the Lambs, Halloween... Guilty. Saw, Friday the 13th. Oh. I think that's a full house. Well, right. Oh, Kristen! Double. Double! Claudia and David, did you get them all? Yep. Donnie Darko saw Halloween, Friday the 13th, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, well Science of the Lambs. Yeah. We got them all as well, no Jonathan need to Bob. check. <laughs> <laughs> Donnie Darko, Science of the Lambs, Halloween, Friday the 13th, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. What was your last one there, sir? Here's Babe Funny. the Pig. Remember Babe the Pig? <laughs> and he says, he, he goes, Babe the, the Pig. pig. He's a pig, know. and he goes, that'll do, pig, that'll do. At the end, he was Babe the Pig. <laughs> OK, let's see what that's done to the scores. I can tell you, in, in joint last place, oh, Kristen Shaw, oh. uh, Mel Gedroyce, 24, Jonathan mm -hmm. Ross, Bob Mortimer, 24, but in the lead, Claudia Winkleman, David Mitchell, 32. Oh. We're going to take a break now, but I'll see you in a bit. Not literally, obviously, I'm just talking to a camera, but I'll be doing it again after the break if you want to watch some more. <laughs> Welcome back to the final part of the Big Fat Quiz of Everything. The next round is all about sports and games. Footballer Pelé is regarded as one of the greatest Brazilians of all time, whereas the worst Brazilian of all time is the one I tried to give myself. 
Have you ever waxed yourself down there, Jimmy? Oh, yeah. I call them Brazil nuts. <laughs> John, have you ever looked in the mirror backwards to have a look at them, just, to, just in case to see if someone's written on them? <laughs> <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> no, but I know what I'm going to do yeah. immediately after the show. <laughs> Time for some questions about sports and games. OK. <laughs> for our first question, it's over to boxing supremo David Hay. Hello, Jimmy. It's the Haymaker here. In boxing, there are two ways you can stand and fight. If you're a righty like me, then you stand like this, which is called the orthodox pose. But if you're a lefty, then you stand like this. What is this dance called? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the one. Jonathan's, Jonathan's got an answer. No, All right, so what is the other stance called? <laughs> Towards the end of the football season in 2003, a very worried Alex Ferguson coined the phrase the Collins Dictionary describes as the tense final stages of a league competition, especially from the point of view of the leaders. What was the phrase? <gasps> he looks a bit there. You know when a child puts on their dad's coat? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Next question. If you were playing with Cavity Sam, what board game would you be playing? If oh! you're... <laughs> well, we got this. We want to roll, Jimmy. <laughs> OK. And finally, take a look at this clip. What is this sportsman talking about? Any of them expressed an interest, though, in trying it? Well, I'm... A lot of young uh, kids in high school have started picking it up in grade school, and most of the people, once they get in college, have already developed their own style, and so it's it's pretty hard to change. How do the other uh, jumpers feel about this? Well, most of them, they don't really care because that's the way they jump, but when they first saw it, well, it was, it's kind of funny looking. I mean, <laughs> I guess you have to admit that. OK, so what on earth is he talking about? I don't know. David knows. Did he say jumping? Yep. Jumping. Mm. I mean... Oh, he's the guy. And David knows it. All right, you ready for answers? Yes. Yes. OK, here we go. So, first up, David Hay asked you, what's the opposite of orthodox stance in boxing? What did you put? <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan and Bob. It's the orthodox and the Hasidic. <laughs> That's a very good answer. <laughs> so, exactly what we had in mind. Uh, Mel. Kristen. Kristen. South Park? Correct. Oh, yes. Claudia, David, did you get it? We also put that. <laughs> Have you done much boxing, Sample. David? No, I've never. No, I've, I've never oh. knowingly struck a man. <laughs> <laughs> I have had two proper bouts and won them both, so I'm undefeated. You fought Les Dennis, didn't you? And Darren Curry. Day. And Darren Day. <laughs> did you knock anyone out? No, I didn't knock them out. I wouldn't do that, Jonathan. No, I'm sorry. What was your style? My style was acidic. <laughs> Thank you, point B. <laughs> OK, points, points, no points. I asked you what famous phrase Sir Alex Ferguson came up with to describe the climactic finale of the 2003 <laughs> Premier League season. What did you put? Cleverly, David remembered this. Squeaky bum time. <laughs> OK, and you've got Jonathan Bob? We also went with squeaky bum time. And you were pretty sure you knew this, Mel. Like you went with... Buttock squeaking. <laughs> That's well, so close. I, I so wouldn't close. be appalled if we didn't get that. that is close. Well, prepare to be appalled. You're not getting that. Oh, <laughs> you do a very. She's appalled. <laughs> I asked you if you were playing with Cavity Sam, what board game would you be playing? Operation. You've gone with op Operation there, uh, Jonathan Bob. You've gone for Dungeons and Dentists. <laughs> Cavity Sam in Dungeons and Dentists. Yes. Yeah. You've gone for Mel? Now, let Kristen? me explain. I put Cavity Sam equals Captain Peacock? Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> I thought maybe it was in your Cluedo, the Brit Cluedo? there's a British <laughs> There's a Captain Peacock. Who's a Cavity Sam who lives in the <laughs> no. basement no. with a, you know, with, with a, a Nova cane. <laughs> well, you'll be surprised to learn you could not be more wrong. <laughs> Operation is the right answer. Oh. Uh, he was, he's the 
You saw a clip of a sportsman being interviewed. Uh, what was oh. he talking about? We've lost. What do you think? I, we, I thought Say maybe what Say what ja javelin jumping, freestyle, like javelin jumping. Javelin jumping. <laughs> you use it to, to launch yourself and then you do a fun jump. Like, you mean like pole vaulting? <laughs> yeah, they, that, that's what I mean. <laughs> Jonathan, Bob. <laughs> well. <laughs> Hopscotch. Well, hopscotch. <laughs> OK. Uh, Claudia, David. I, I think it's the high jump. The Fosbury flop. Well, let's take a look. <laughs> so that was uh, Dick Fosbury who invented the Fosbury flop. So it could have been called the Dick flop. Yeah. <laughs> OK, for our final Big Fat Quiz question, we've enlisted the help of two of the stars of Strictly Come Dancing. Please welcome to the stage, Karen and Kevin Clifton. Yay! Hello. Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah. How are you guys? You well? Yes, very good, thanks. Yeah. OK, excellent. So, stars, so you know, you know, our Claudia, of course. Hi, Claudia. Hi, Claudia. <laughs> OK, so Karen and Kevin are going to give us a dance history lesson. They're going to demonstrate eight different dances oh, in one yeah. minute. I want you to name as many dancers as you can. There's a point for each. Bring down the mirror ball. OK. Yay! OK, so performing a history of dance, here's Karen and Kevin Clifton. Yay! Did you get them all? Well, we, I so thought you said five, so after the fifth, I started relaxing to enjoy the dancing. <laughs> we didn't write any more down. Then we quickly tried to catch up, so we only got seven. Kristen, Mel, have you got eight? Yeah. You've got eight? <laughs> yeah. OK. Have you got eight? Claudia, if you don't get this, I mean, there'll be trouble. I got ten. OK, so, so take us through them. So what was the, the, first, the first bit? So the first, first bit, bit was a tango. Yes. Okay, let's have a look. OK, so that was the tango. That was right, this okay. bit where we went round yeah, like that. OK, so second yeah. bit. Second bit was. Second we did on the floor. We okay. did a bit of foxtrot. All right, show oh. us the foxtrot. Oh. Like this. That was the foxtrot. Okay. Fox okay. Then we did a bit of charleston. Yes. 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 <laughs> With a little trick. With a lift. And then what? Okay, the lift. Yeah. And then what was it? Shag. This was a hand jive. Yeah. Yes. The hand jive is the only bit I can do. <laughs> and we did the running man. Yes. Yes, we got that. Okay. Brilliant. Man. And then you did the Macarena. 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 That bit. It's everyone's favourite. Okay. My favourite is, is Big Box. Big Fish, Little Fish, fish Cardboard <laughs> Box. <laughs> big Fish, Little <laughs> Fish, Cardboard yeah, Box. Yeah. And then I was Up I was twerking desk. in David Twerk. Mitchell's face. Yes. <laughs> okay, excellent. So those were the eight. Well, let's let's come was, back here. We'll I see what they got. I must say, I was distracted from the twerking by the fact that I was worried you were about to stand on my phone. I didn't get the full. Erotic force of it. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. Yeah. It was strong. So, Jonathan, Bob, you've got six. Oh. Mel and Kristen, you've got six. Oh, come on. I think we got eight. Claudia, David, you've got two. <laughs> wow. Oh. <laughs> oh. I don't know how we've managed to write down the names of so many dances that weren't the ones you... <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't know there were that many. No. We got time. Cha cha cha, rumba. No, none of this happened. <laughs> <laughs> How can we have only coincided with two? I can't do it. So many words. We've put about twelve. Down. David, David, that isn't the weird thing. It's the fact that the show she hosts. <laughs> 
Stella. Yeah. He's the dancing show. <laughs> when Strictly, they tell you what the dance is at the beginning. You don't have to Someone's guess it. Someone's in my exactly. ears yeah. saying rumba. <laughs> Look, if you've got Anne Whittaker on the dance floor, you have to name what it is in advance, cos no-one's gonna guess. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoying watching you oh. two so much because I love you. You were fantastic. <laughs> Thanks very much. That was amazing. All right, let's take a look and see what that's done to the final scores. In please, joint last please, place. Please. Oh. oh, come on! Kristen and Mel. Oh. <laughs> Kristen and Mel uh, uh, with 31 points, Jonathan and Bob with 31 points. But the winners of the Big Fat Quiz of yeah. Everything, David and Claudia. Yeah. Another big fat quiz of everything at the same time, 9 o'clock next Monday. Man Down continues on Wednesday night at 10, and the latest series is now available in all its glory to catch up on at all four. Next tonight, both Sapphire and Kieran are looking for ladies in naked attraction. <laughs> <laughs>